Today we're going to review the Pulsar Gen 1 Pilot's Chronograph. So settle down, grab yourself a brew and I'll see you in a mo. Welcome back to Tea and Tickers, my name is John, I simply drink tea and talk about watches. So this is the Pulsar V657X063, Generation 1 Pilot's Chronograph from 2006. This is the civilian version and they make a military issued version where there are a couple of differences, which we'll go through in a moment. So I bought this second hand last week of ebay for 120 pounds you want to buy an issued one it'll probably cost you about 600 quid and probably won't be in the, as good a condition as this so this is an issued one and the differences are as you can see there is an l at the three o'clock position underneath the writing this denotes that the use of luminor on the hands and the hands themselves are a different shape. These are pencil hands, and on the issued one, there are sword hands. The movement is the same as Seiko V657 quartz movement. So let me take you on the other side of the camera now, and we'll take a closer look at this watch. See you in a mo. So here you go, the... Pulsar Gen 1 Pilot's Chronograph from 2006, civilian version. So there are a couple of issues with the Gen 1. Uh, the first being that the, um, in a, what I would call the standard chronograph, the centre second hand should be stationary when it's um, being used as a normal watch. And when you set off the chronograph, then the same to second hand would move. As you can see, this is moving all the time. And when you set the chronograph off, the second um, indicator is this one here at six o'clock. Um, what they did is when they brought out the Gen 2, they changed the movement to how you would expect it to be. Uh, the other problem that uh, manifested was uh, there was a notice to airmen given out uh, to the pilots um, which said that the crown had a tendency to pop off and ricochet around the cockpit of the fast jet they were in. Uh, which is not something that you uh, particularly want to happen. So in 2014, they brought out the Gen 2. Now this is the Gen 2. As you can see, fairly similar. Uh, but the subtitles under 12 o'clock and above 6 o'clock are different. And that's uh, second-hand... Uh, would be stationary uh, if it was only just being used as a watch. Now, they didn't make a civilian version at all of the Gen 2, only the issued one. Uh, the guy who's selling this on eBay, and also um, he's got another one of these for sale, and he's previously sold them, he had it down as being a Gen 2, so I had to put him right that it was a gen one to be fair i only found out this week that you can't get a gen two civilian so uh, every day's a school day when you're into interesting watches all in all i think it's a pretty nice watch and uh, i think it will come quite collectible one because the gen one uh i think it looks better a better dial than the gen two and second, because 
if he wants a pulsar, one of the, he want one of the Gen One or Gen Two civilians. Well, you can only get a Gen One, as I just said. So it could become quite collectible. There you go. If you're into military watches, it's probably a good place to start with one of these. Um, perhaps you should mention that the lug width is. Uh, 20 mil and it doesn't have fixed lugs on the civilian or the military so you can put whatever kind of strap you want on the watch uh, but I say it looks good on a on a NATO which is probably what most people would put on it so thanks for watching if you're new to the channel please subscribe there's a little subscribe button in the corner uh, and please click the little bell that notifies uh, when more videos drop, usually about once a week. And you can also find me at Instagram at Tier Tickers. Thanks for watching. See you next time.